question number three, and we're going to be talking about inverse functions. And it says if f is 1 to 1, then it has an inverse function. So, alternatively, to be an inverse function, it must be 1 to 1. 1 to 1, remember, we can test that. Um, well, if we're looking at a graph, we know a function is 1 to 1, say that's our graph. If it passes both the um, vertical line test, which would mean it's a function, but what we call the horizontal line test. And the horizontal line test means we only want to intersect it in one place. This function here, obviously, not one to one, we intersect it in three places. Um, so that's how to tell um, if it's one to one for um, your, uh, when looking at a graph. Another way, what it, else it means to be one to one, it means that for every distinct x value, you have a distinct y value. And that that y value is distinct for that individual x, which means that no other x value can you reach that y value. So um, we only want to have one y value to every x value. And not only that, that y value, it can only happen at that x value. So it says for part A, how are the range and domain of f and the inverse of f related? So for our range, our domain and range, so, so say I have my domain in my range is my original function. And I want them to re I want to relate them to my domain and my range of my inverse. And so um, they're related because the domain of your um, regular function is equivalent to the range of your inverse. And the um, range of your original function is equivalent to the domain of your inverse. So that is that. The next question. Um, the next question, part B, says that if f is one to one and f of f of two is equal to nine, what is the inverse of f of nine? And um, again, that goes back. To what we were just saying about the domain and range is how they're related. So this is my x value and this is my y value. But for in my inverse, my x value becomes my y value. My y value becomes my x value. You see here how this is y. So this will be equivalent to 2. We're just going to switch those. And then the last, or no, part C. So your answer is just 2 for this one. Part C says find the inverse function of f of x is equal to 3x plus 1 over 2x minus 5. And the way that we find inverse functions from our original function is the very first step, we're going to switch x and y. So we've got um, x now is equal to 3y plus 1 over 2y minus 5. We're going to multiply both sides. And so we get x times 2y minus 5 is equal to 3y plus 1. Multiply those things by 2y minus 5. And then we're going to distribute this x in here. And so we get 2xy minus 5x is equal to 3y plus 1. Now, because I'm looking to, again, solve for y, I'm going to make all of my y terms on one side, all my terms without y, to the other. So I add 5x to both sides. I subtract 3y. And I get 2xy minus 3y is equal to 1 plus 5x. Then I'm going to factor out a y. So that's going to give me uh, y times 2x minus 3. And then you divide both sides by 2x minus 3. And so, let me write this up here. So we get 1 plus 5x over 2x minus 3 as your inverse of your original function. And then, again, we've got part D now. Part D says, if 1, negative 4 is on F and 3, 
4 is on G, and F is 1 to 1, and G is odd, well, then what is the inverse of G of negative 3? So if we know that G is odd, um, we know a little bit about odd even functions. Even function says that no matter if our x value is positive or negative, we're going to get the same y value. And our odd function says that if x is positive, then we're going to have a positive y value. But if x is negative, we're going to have a negative um, y value. Or we're going to, so, well, or you can write it this. You can have f of x is equal to, right, um, f of x is equal to f of x. Or, so that's, or f of negative x is equal to negative f of x. So this is um, an even function. So that says that no matter if you plug in a negative x into your f of x equation, you're still going to get f of x. But our odd function says if we plug in negative x into our f of x equation, we're going to get negative f of x. So we know based off this that if this is an odd function, we should get negative 3, negative 4. And so, um, I'm going to just look at this inside portion here first. And g of negative 3, we know now, is negative 4, so now we have the inverse of negative 4. Which, going back to this function, the inverse of this, if this is my y value, my answer is going to be my x value. So your answer is just 1. And that's it. That's question number 3 about... Uh, a little bit about odd and even functions, but mostly about inverses.